um, yeah, a couple of years ago now, uh, this fella came round where I worked and he offered to do them, you see, for five pounds. And um, he said... Mark, give us your warning, we haven't got all night. Well, he said, do you want the whole glass to it? So I said, all right, you know. A couple of years later, I come to sell the car. I found that I can't take the spotlights off because the registration's on them. So in other words, when you go and get your windows etched, don't don't be too eager. Don't be greedy. In other words, don't have your, win your fog lamps and all that done. That's right. There, that was easy, wasn't it? Yep. A very sensible piece of advice that borders all to tears. <laughs> Thank you, goodbye. Ah, this is the life. A bargain holiday, thanks to the late booking desk at National Travel World. Oh, we saved ourselves a fortune. Not only that, but they gave us a microwave for only £7 to £9. Pounds. I could have had 10% discount off any item over £100 at Centro, but I'd rather have the microwave. Oh, so that's why reading a cookery book now, is it? Well, you won't be doing any cooking for another two weeks. We're on holiday. Oh, yes, I will. I brought the microwave with us. If you want a last-minute bargain holiday plus a microwave for only £79, pounds, book before the 30th of June at National Travel World's late booking desk. There are dozens of places to buy fitted kitchens from in this area, so why choose Red Rose Kitchens? For starters, we have the largest choice of solid wood and superior laminate kitchens in Lancashire. You buy direct from your local manufacturer, saving hundreds of pounds on showroom prices. And with our first-class reputation, you can be sure the work will be completed with the thought, care and efficiency you'll appreciate. For a hundred other good reasons to choose Red Rose Kitchens, come down to the factory on Moorbrook Street off Garstang Road, Preston, or phone 59139. Red Rose Kitchens, the name you'll want to remember. Rotters, the Northwest's only big night out. Every Friday and Saturday from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Enjoy the time of your life with the best in music at Rotters. The best in hen party nights at Rotters. With four bars, four dance floors, and a better party night atmosphere. Check out Rotters, Oxford Street, Manchester, this Friday or Saturday. Rotters, Fungalore, and a whole lot more. It's bigger, it's better, it's Rotters. Ring Manchester 236 4934. Manchester 236 4934. Rotters. So this is your new Fiesta from Bradshaw's, eh? Oh, very nice. Yeah, your driving's improved very smooth. Thank you for your patronising appraisal of my motoring abilities, Eric, but it's all thanks to the revolutionary CTX automatic transmission system. It simply means driving couldn't be simpler. The Fiesta 1.1 or gear now comes with the option of CTX automatic transmission at Bradshaw's. So you don't have to change gear. What's wrong with what I'm wearing? You're better off at Bradshaw's. It's melodic moment time. Night time. The right time. Let everybody know you to Red Rose Radio. I suppose one thing a bus does occasionally is uh, text your own. Perhaps Phil Collins should have got one. He don't live in Blackpool, does he? Never mind. He's a good one, isn't he? Phil Collins, take me home. <laughs> There's a few females listening to this programme and do that. Take Phil Collins home. In fact, there's one or two blokes. What? Preston 561000, if you want to join us on the phone in, you've got just over an hour because it's four minutes to one. How do James? Good evening, Mr. Betty. Um, Good evening. I'd like to talk about a, a mystery of the First World War. But before I mention that, could I just say something prior to that, leading up to it? In 1885, a little village in the south of France, uh, Rennes le Chateau, received a new parish priest, and his uh, average wage was six pounds a week, uh, six pounds a year, rather, sorry. Uh, however, six years later, he uh, arranged a little bank loan with the local village committee of a couple of hundred francs, and he did some renovation on the church. Uh, in taking the altar stone off, he found inside one of the pillars four um, tubes, wooden tubes, and they were hollow, and inside the tubes, he, um, inside 
study in documents. So I went to Paris for these documents, and then I came back. And all of a sudden, he had money to burn. <clears throat> in fact, in the next 20 years, he spent several million uh, francs. Now then, in 1916, France was at war with Germany and Austria. And uh, in 1916, the Archduke Johann von Habsburg, a cousin of Franz Joseph, the Emperor of Austria, paid a visit to um, a little tiny village in the south of France. Now, he couldn't do that without a lot of um, arrangements being made, and the Vatican made the arrangements. He opened a bank account for um, this parish priest um, and a um, bank account for himself. Do you know why? I'm sure you're going to tell me. I'm not going to tell you, no. Well, no, I don't then, do you? Good night. Good night. How do Paul? Morning, Alan. Morning. Uh, just before I came on to say what I was going to say, um, I've, I've tried phoning four times tonight, and uh, the, I phoned, and the dials kept going. But uh, you know um, how many lines is it you've got? Don't know. Because uh, you know I've got the dial and tone, but no one's answered. Well, it takes a while to get through to them all. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway. Uh, I was so what do you want now? You have got on. Well, there. Uh, a couple of nights ago, um, a lot from Liverpool phones going on about postman. You've got about 30 seconds to get to your point. Uh, anyway, I'm a postman, and I live in Liverpool, and I don't take gyro checks often. There. Thank you very much for that. How do, Michael? Hello? Yes? Yeah, I'd like to talk about the Constitution. I don't believe that uh, a government should be allowed to um, decide when the, the date of the next election. I believe that uh, a government should sh serve its full five years in office. Uh, for the simple reason that it's a, it's a, it gives an unfair advantage to the the, uh, the government in power, that it can choose an election when it's it's doing well. They can manipulate it, possible. but but nonetheless, even if we made them go the full five years, they could still manipulate the system so that they gave all the goodies away in the last year. Yeah, well, so they still could create the they still could create an advantage. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't disagree that they could create an advantage. All I'm saying is that uh, that uh, well, for example, this I don't want. To to put a party political point of view, but... Uh, OK, well, we've, but, got, uh, we've got your inert point. All yeah. right, don't go away. The One O'Clock News, this is Sarah Jones. A man has been shot dead in West Belfast in what seems to have been a sectarian murder by terrorists. David Stokes has been to the scene of the shooting. The father of four was lifting groceries out of the boot of his car parked outside his West Belfast home when the terrorist struck from a passing vehicle. At least six bullets hit the man and a young eyewitness describes what he saw. I saw a man laying out of the, over a door with a gun. It might have been a rifle, I don't know. I just seen him pulling it in and getting into the car and it spun down. This was after the shooting? Yeah. It went down a new road on the spring, or on the, what's Shanker Road? The murdered man was due to leave on a Spanish holiday with his family later today. Police are working on the theory that the shooting was sectarian. David Stokes, IRN, Belfast. Tory MPs are calling for a shake-up in the prosecution services after a magistrate freed John Fleming, who's been in custody since he was brought back from Florida in March. The JP cleared Mr Fleming of involvement in the Brinks Matt Bullion robbery. Now MP John Wheeler is asking why the case was brought. Veteran Dennis Healy will be leading Labour's attack on government foreign policy in the Commons later today. It'll be his last major speech as Shadow Foreign Secretary before joining the opposition backbenches. Mr Healy, who turns 70 this summer, says he's standing down to allow his successor plenty of experience before the next general election. From Westminster, Martha Carney reports. As the most experienced politician in Neil Kinnock's team, Dennis Healy will be hard to replace. It's thought Deputy Leader Roy Hattersley will turn the job down, so Neil Kinnock may gamble on a younger man, 
possibly Brian Gould, a tip for the top of the shadow cabinet poll after his success as Labour's campaign manager. It'll be a tough fight for the 15 places, with soft and hard left groups failing to agree on a joint ticket. A split that's already led to bitter accusations that the right wing may again dominate the shadow cabinet. Martha Carney, RN, Westminster. Transplant patient Kelly Hanna is recovering after her second heart and lung transplant operation at London's Harefield Hospital. Eight-year-old Kelly has been on a ventilator since her body rejected the organs given to her in her first transplant operation just over a year ago. World cricket today faces a crisis over race that it has sought to avoid for 20 years. The International Cricket Conference at Lords in London will have to rule on a West Indian resolution that any players with South African connections should be banned from Test cricket. Tim Knight reports. If the West Indies proposal were carried, it would affect about 70 English professionals who earned their winter living coaching in South Africa. The English and Australian cricket authorities oppose the resolution, but the balance of ICC membership is tilted towards the black countries, and now the Pakistan captain Imran Khan has warned the Test and County Cricket Board to change what he calls their blinkered approach and respect the foreign policies of other countries which state connections with South Africa are unacceptable. Independent Radio News. Bring him, if you dare. Alan Bensick, the Late Night Show. Into the final hour at three and a half minutes past one, the telephone number is Preston, 561000. Now then, Michael. Yeah, uh, I don't want to argue from a political point of view, but... Of course you um, don't. <laughs> the, the last election... Uh, the Tories went to the polls, um, in my view, just before the, uh, the uh, um, publication of Peter Wright's um, memoirs in, in Australia, which I believe could have done a lot of damage to the Conservative Party. Well, they didn't go to the polls. What do you mean they went to the polls? Well, they went to the polls. Any damage, the any damage that could have been done by Peter Wright's books already been done, I suggest. Well, I, I, I don't agree with you. I, I think that, um, well, you know that uh, the Guardian, I think the Observer were... Uh, um, brought it up in court for printing his, well, part of his memoir. That's right. Yeah, and uh, at, at the moment, I don't think the p British public is aware of his uh, uh, Peter Wright's memoir. But when the book is published, when the book is published, the book is published in, in Australia, they won't be aware even then. Yeah, I know, but uh, once it's well, unless they're aware, it's not going to affect the outcome of any well, potential election, is I'm, it? I'm sorry, but uh, once it, it is, it, it is published. Uh, copies will filter through to Britain, and. Um, well, I know it's going to be published in, in America as well soon, and eventually, you know, the British. But the only way the public, be, the only way the British public, as you call them, are going to become aware is if the British media, that's ourselves, television, and the like, newspapers, get involved and start printing the stories. And if there yeah. is not permission given for it to be printed in this country, then it cannot be yeah. printed. And half a dozen, or even two hundred copies, coming over from America, from Ireland, where it's already on sale, or indeed from Australia. Are totally and utterly yeah. useless. The, They're not going to inform the British that. public. The fact is that in the end, the, the Peter Wright's memoirs will eventually be published in this country. And that that may or may not be the case. Well, I, I believe that they well, will. Well, fine, that, that may or may not be the case. Yeah, but when they do eventually become published in this country, it will do damage to the Conservative Party. But the government has little opportunity to predict when they will be published yes, in this but, country. But, but by their. Uh, almost desperate efforts to try and get the book stopped in 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 Australia. You know, that they are sort of admitting that uh, you know they've got something to hide. As I, I would I, I, I'm I, sorry, I, I don't accept that. I don't accept. I don't accept the assumption you make. Just because you don't want secrets broadcast doesn't mean you've actually got something untoward to hide. Just that you've got something to hide. Yeah. Well, I'm not uh, um, arguing on an anti-conservative. I'm just arguing that uh, the Conservatives have run to the polls, well, run to the electorate, you know, before any of the, the, uh, the Peter Wright stories have come out. Well, there's no arguing that they have gone to the electorate before those stories have come out. Yes, yeah. well, officially. What However, the fact still remains that I don't think that was what motivated them. Yeah, well, what I'm ar arguing for is, is that uh, a government should serve a full five years in office. Unless? There um, should never be an unless? Unless? Unless. Should there ever be an unless? <laughs> um, a but. I, I should there ever be an occasion when they should not serve their full five to years term of office? Yes. When? Uh, when 
um, if there's a hung parliament and where no bills can get through at all, if one party is just blocking bills completely, you know, and nothing is getting through parliament. Then who I make, believe who makes the decision if, then? Yeah. Well, who then, makes the decision then? If the parties agree, all, all three of them, that at, at, at that time parliament is unworkable, then there they is can an petition easy, the Queen there to is absolve an easy, parliament and call another general election. There is an easier way to state your case. And the easier way is to say when the opposition parties move a vote of no confidence and that vote of no confidence is successful. That's what you should have said. Well, isn't that what I said in the first... Well, no, you didn't, but don't worry. <laughs> what you Sorry, said I'm was if the bills won't go through Parliament, oh, 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 don't need all that. If the opposition votes no confidence and the vote of no confidence carries, then before the five years term they should abandon Parliament and, what is it, ask the Queen to dissolve. Yeah, but, uh, I believe so. that even, I think it's, it's got to be serious, um... A vote of no confidence is quite serious. <laughs> okay, what, what? cheers. Alice Stephen. Good morning, Alan. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it a good morning? Yeah. Good. Well, good. continue then. I'd like to tell about an incident that happened while I was here and waiting at a train station a few weeks back. Can I please? We shall see. We shall see, right. Saturday from 9 till 12, the chart of Lancashire's favourites will be played on Lancashire's favourite station. The Red Rose Top 40 on Red Rose Radio, in association with Red Rose Kitchens of Moorbrook Street, Preston. Manufacturers of quality fitted kitchens and the number one kitchen for your home. The chart is compiled by computer every week from sales throughout the North West. Catch the Top 40 this Saturday at 9am and discover which songs being made number one by you. Hey, listen, the boss is away on holiday, so to get him back for years of stick, I'm clearing all this socket, showers and cable. In fact, anything electrical at prices so low, it'd go bonkers. The Triton T70 shower unit, trade price £61, my price £48.99, including VAT. Expel Air window fan, trade price £38, my price £31.50, including VAT. All this at Steve Gorton Discount Electrical Supplies, 39 Water Lane, Ashton Preston, or Electrical Super Safe Centre, 230 Chorley Old Road, Bolton. But hurry, the boss gets back in a couple of weeks and he's bound to fire me. Looking for a great day out for the kids but want to enjoy yourself as well? Come along to Morecambe Leisure Park. Youngsters can spend a full day for just £1.50 and you can relax in the picnic areas, the modern cafe or even have a drink at the bar. Morecambe Leisure Park is a great day out for the kids to visit and a great day out for you. Phone Morecambe, 419 419 now for details. How do, Peter? Hello, Alan. Yep. I'd like to talk about football violence with me. Go on. Uh, we're now approaching the football season on one No, we're not approaching it. It's weeks off. It is. It, it'll be here within us as, very soon. Fine. Give me your point, because foot it's the cricket season. I can't be doing with football, so I'm going to get, on, you don't like football. get on with your point. I'm I do. quick. And once again, I'm going to have to suffer hooliganism on the terraces. Or on no, the you're not. Don't go. How do, yes. how do Kane win? Hi, hi. I'm speaking from North Wales. Don't I'm care. going back to the previous caller, ignoring football and cricket and all that. Do you think that there is. Don't ask any... me questions. Tell me what you've got to say. What I have to say is. I hope that there is a point in people putting their opinion forward regarding the various issues that are current in relation to the, in, well, to do with the election recently. Cameron, can I, can I just point out to you that at yeah. the moment you're talking gibberish? Okay, right, fine, that's fair enough. It's very difficult when you just... I know it's difficult, <laughs> but it's difficult for people to understand gibberish. No, no, what I'm saying is... Do you hold out any hope for various issues that have come up recently in, in relation to the election that do you think that people can get their opinions forward, the majority, i.e. the unspoken majority, i.e. the uh, apparent democracy? Is your question, yes. do I think that the unspoken majority can get their have opinions? an opportunity? I'll ask it. Yes. You've had your go, you had four go. goals and didn't make any proof. Is your question, do I think that the unspeaking majority can get their opinions made known. Yeah, right. No. You don't. Why not? Well, where are they going to do it? 
What? How did you say? Where or how? Where or how? Well, I don't know. I just said. Well, neither do they. How do they? I don't. No, know. now do the day. You don't know where to get the unspoken opinions across. Neither do they. Is is? Yeah, I agree entirely. The only thing we have in this country. Yeah. Is a great surging mass. Yeah. A great amorphous surging oh, amorphous, mass. Yes. Of apathy. I agree entirely. Right. Now, how are we going to get these beep beeps on the we move? We aren't. We aren't. Uh, oh, sh poop. <laughs> poop to you too. We aren't. No, I'm you tell me how you're going to do it. We've just had a general election. What percentage of the voting population turned out to vote? We are apparently supposed to be the f one of the freest nations. You don't answer the question. I know I don't. What percentage turned out to vote? It's like Excuse me, beeping right. Yeah, I know. It's it it is. It's very hard. What percentage turned out to vote? It's you don't know. Odd. Seventy odd, right? That means twenty-five percent. Don't give a monkey's cuss. I know. So how are you going to make them? Well, exactly right. Do how they, are you going to make them? Do they give her? How are you going to make them? The no, they don't give her. That's why they didn't. It is. It is so confusing. It's so frustrating. Not confusing. Frustrating. It may be. Frustrating. It is. I, I agree suggest entirely. you put your energies in another direction. Well, I'm trying very, very hard. But the problem is that unless they actually walk out on that day and stick their little piece of paper in the appropriate place. Well, can we? Yeah. Surely you agree with freedom. I do. Well, they're free not to do out. How do Derek? Come on, Derek. Goodbye, Derek. How do Kingsley? Hello, Alan. Yep. Do you know the reasoning behind the fact that everyone between the ages of 16 and 18 who is not in full-time employment um, gets some kind of money from the government who is not in higher education? Why should the government be in higher education? I mean... You said who... the government who is not in higher education. Of course it's not. Oh, if I said that, I didn't mean to. Oh. I mean, people who are in higher education between the ages of 16 or 18... Um, are not getting money from the government, but everyone else who's not in full-time unemployment between those ages is getting money from the government. Because they are accepting training for work and those who are in higher education may, n may not necessarily be so doing. But then why do people who are going to university after those ages, between, say, 18 and 21, get money, and the people between 16 and 18 don't? Because the government decided some years ago that university students require funds to get by on. Well, don't people between the ages of 16 they and They consider people. They do not want to encourage people to continue for further education unless they're going to go the full Monty and do university. Well, shouldn't they be um, encouraging people to do that? Shouldn't they? Well, Should they, they be encouraging people to do that? That's a political decision, and the policies of the governments for the last few years has been, no, they shouldn't. Well, I think they should be doing what that. What would be the benefit of it? Um, training more people. Training um, them for what? Well, if you train more people, there'll be more Training people. them for what? You can train... Let us train 5,000 lion tamers tomorrow. What contribution will that make? Well, so training them for what? Well, I don't think that would make any, any contribution. Nor do I. So training them for what? I keep asking, you don't answer. Train them, training them um, to be able to go on to further education from higher education. Well, if they're going on to further education, uh, I think you mean higher education from further education, don't you? Um, yeah. Yeah, I thought, thought the wrong way around, yeah, rather thought you had. Training them to go on to higher education, fine. The government is not going to encourage people to train in further education for higher education because it works on the basis of if they do that, they will encourage yet more people to go into higher education and they don't actually want them to because we've got enough graduates to get us by. Thank you very much. Well, I don't think we have got enough graduates. Well, you're not the government. You asked me why they're doing it. Whether you're, they are right or not is an entirely separate issue. Oh, well, what I they th think they have. Oh, well, I don't agree with that. I think. Well, I suggest you write to your MP. How do Ronnie? Hello, Alan. Yes. I'd like to bring to perspective a reply you made earlier tonight to a caller who was uh, who said that. The then put it into perspective. Into perspective, yes. Uh, the caller said that the government were underspending on the health service, and you correctly said that they, in fact they were spending more money on the health service. However, in real terms, they're actually spending less. Uh, by real and what do you mean by real terms? I'm sure you're going to tell us. OK, I am, yes. Uh, when the government talk about spending in real terms, what they do is they compare their expenditure with the I inflation... I want to know what you mean in real terms. OK. 
Okay, well, you compare the expenditure with the inflation rate. Uh, <coughs> so that if the inflation rate is high, you obviously have to be spending more money to keep up with what you've been spending in the past, you see. <coughs> However, when, uh, when they judge well, the Let me stop you a second yeah. and say that the government claims, I'm yeah. sure you're going to consider contradicting them, yeah. but the government claims that even taking into account consideration, yeah. they are putting more one pound coins yep. into the health service than did the previous or okay. the, the government of a previous political of yeah. a different political persuasion yeah. well in fact where they're making the mistake on this well i don't think they are making a mistake well, i know i think they're saying exactly what they mean to say ah. whether they're saying the truth or not i'm sure you're going to tell me okay yes they shall when they in order to, de to decide whether they're spending more money in real terms you have to consider what the inflation rate is now the inflation rate that they use is the domestic inflation rate uh, which is what between three and five percent at the moment but in the health service, the inflation rate for drugs, for services, for operations, is far higher than the domestic inflation rate. In fact, the cost of drugs are increasing by orders of magnitude greater than the, <coughs> the domestic inflation rate. Secondly, uh, disposable equipment, catheters, etc., the cost of those is increasing far higher than the domestic inflation rate. Also...